Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Thomas Mark and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing my top two VPNs versus Reddit's top two VPNs. Hey guys, if you like this video and you want to help support the channel, consider clicking on some of the links down in the description down below or using some of my promo codes. Click on the VPN links and it'll take you to the VPN. If you don't like affiliate links or you don't want to help support the channel, just go to the website yourself and you don't have to use any of my links or anything like that and that's perfectly fine as well. Anyways guys, back to the video. Now guys, my, here on my channel, I have rated over 60 plus VPNs and throughout all this time, I've measured things objectively as possible and picked the best VPN for you guys. That's why a lot of you are very happy with the VPNs that you've picked here on the channel. That said, Reddit is kind of a different beast. So I think what it really comes down to with the difference between what I rate as my top VPN and what Redditors value as their top VPN. Well, for me, I consider a lot of things that most Redditors miss. Most Redditors don't ever really talk about how expensive a VPN is or if it works with streaming. In fact, there are some niche communities like my reddit.com slash r slash Netflix via VPN that really does value like streaming as the main thing. But vastly, most of the other privacy related or VPN subreddits don't really value streaming as much. They don't see VPNs as something that you would use to unlock geo restrictions, which is a big fundamental thing they're missing. Not only that, but other things like customer support and overall compatibility are also things that a lot of people kind of forget to mention. Probably one of the biggest things that Redditors do value and one of the primary reasons why they pick certain VPNs over others is that some VPNs don't have affiliate program. A lot of Reddit is very anti-affiliate. They don't like people um, posting affiliate links. They don't like anyone who is making a living by recommending products to people because they view it as disingenuous. Now, if I wasn't making affiliate revenue, I wouldn't be making any money on the channel hardly at all. And I actually wouldn't be reviewing VPNs. I couldn't afford to do so. I would have to get a real job and I wouldn't have time to do any of this stuff. We've seen good examples of this with that one privacy guy. He had a w website where he was making no money and doing reviews the best he could. But after a couple months, he kind of just gave up and stopped doing reviews because he wasn't making any money and he had to go back to his full time job. Eventually, he managed to sell his website to Cape. And that's a textbook example of why having no affiliate program isn't necessarily a good idea. So for people who hate affiliates or people who hate people who are affiliates with VPNs, it's just kind of a load of BS in my opinion, because with that example, we see what happens when honest reviewers don't use affiliate programs. They just stop reviewing things. That's why here on the channel, I've reviewed almost every single VPN out there because I've perfected my review system, but also perfected the way you know, we can review VPNs honestly. We don't pick and rate VPNs by higher commission models. We don't take undisclosed sponsorship deals or anything like that. We simply rate VPNs the way they are as how good they are, not the affiliate program behind it. Easier said than done, you'll almost find no other website doing this out there. And in fact, there's even people trying to copy my tier list and you can see what would happen if my tier list was influenced by affiliate compensation, what it would look like. This is what it would look like. Yikes. Most of my top VPNs barely pay any commissions compared to some of the big boys out there. Stuff like TorGuard and WeVPN only pay 30% commissions, which isn't anything compared to some of the other top VPNs out there. So now that we got that out of the way, um, just to clear up any misconceptions of, hey, you know, you're just reviewing these VPNs because you're biased and they're paying you. Um, compared to these other ones that don't have affiliate programs, that's not really a component of how this is working. And that's where we're going to show you in a subjective comparison where I've made some nice tables. So now we're going to be comparing my top VPNs to Reddit's top VPNs. These VPNs aren't necessarily, you know, the top VPNs of every Reddit user, just VPNs that I always see recommended on stuff like VPN torrents and some of the other subreddits out there. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and check out some of these tables. So first up, what we're going to be taking a look at is pricing. We're going to be comparing TorGuard, WeVPN, Mulvad, and iVPN in the pricing category. Which one is the cheapest per month to subscribe to? This is just simply objective facts. Now we are using promo codes for the ones that allow it. Mulvad and iVPN do not have any promo codes or discounts you could find anywhere. Whereas TorGuard and WeVPN have promo codes for their affiliate partners, which is another reason why picking a VPN that has an affiliate program is actually a bonus to you because you end up paying less than some of these other options. TorGuard is only $5 a month with promo code TomSpark, and WeVPN is around $9 with promo code TomSpark. Uh, through this comparison, you can see that Mulvad and TorGuard are the cheapest, following WeVPN and then iVPN. 
Molvad is around 5 euros, so you do have to take that into consideration when converting it to USD. So Torgard is a clear winner here in terms of the cheapest value, so that is very nice to see. Additionally, if we take a look at longer term subscription plans, Torguard and WeVPN are vastly superior to both Molvad and iVPN. Torguard being only around $30 a year and Molvad um, being around $60, iVPN being $100 plus, and WeVPN actually being right behind Torguard only $40 a year. So as you can see from this ob objective price comparison, Torguard is a clear winner here followed by Molvad. Next up, we can look at one hour ticket response times. Can the VPNs provide good enough customer support to respond to your ticket within one hour so you're not just waiting forever to fix a problem? Fortunately, TorGuard, WeVPN, and Wolvad were able to respond within my one hour tests, seen in my reviews with proof of screenshots of the response tickets. So that's really good to see all those three VPNs being pretty much equal, whereas iVPN wasn't able to meet the one hour ticket response time, which was definitely a little bit of a letdown, but not a big deal for some people out there, because I think they did respond within a day or so. Next up, we can take a look at streaming compatibility. Both TorGuard and WeVPN are excellent in this aspect. TorGuard relies on selling you some kind of add-on or streaming bundle that gives you pretty much unique streaming IPs that are harder to block. That's kind of their method. WeVPN just has native streaming compatibility built in that works through DNS and some other methods that they use to unblock Netflix. My chosen VPN for streaming is probably going to be WeVPN because you don't have to pay extra. It's built into that core plan around $9 a month or $40 a year. Whereas with TorGuard's bundle, you do have to pay extra for the streaming IPs, ending up for a more expensive price of around $11 or $60 a year. So WeVPN, I think, is a definite winner in terms of the streaming compatibility section. Molvad can kind of work with Netflix here and there. Um, intermittently, but you do have to talk to support and it can be a hassle trying to find which server is working. It also didn't work with some of the other services I tested in my review and iVPN didn't work with any of the streaming services out there. So definitely not a very good VPN for streaming. Next up, we could check out a new table that I made for compatibility. And this one is going to be explaining how compatible your VPN is. We take a look at stuff like Soxite Proxy, browser extensions, does your VPN support having extensions on browser? This can be useful for some people who want to use browser extensions or put your VPN as a extension on your browser. And then we have the Linux GUI, um, which is a graphical user interface for Linux, which means you can use these VPNs with applications without having to use a command line interface. Just a note here, WeVPN is in beta, but you can access the Linux GUI through their Discord to download that and test it out. Um, and we also have stuff like native Amazon Fire Stick apps, which you can use to unblock streaming services or use your VPN while using an Amazon Fire Stick. Um, you also have stuff like eight simultaneous connections, which we are looking for. Can these VPNs allow you to connect then more than eight simultaneous devices at the same time? So from this list, we can see TorGuard and WeVPN doing exceedingly well in compatibility and Molvad and iVPN missing out on the same things. Both Molvad and iVPN for some reason don't support any browser extensions. Not really sure why after all this time, maybe they don't see the use for it, but it is definitely something people like to see. I've seen people request it and use them a fair amount. Lastly, in terms of simultaneous connections, we also see around 10 plus with TorGuard and WeVPN, which is really nice, giving you the ability to connect more devices at the same time. Both TorGuard and WeVPN win. Next up, we have the privacy category, seeing which VPNs do well in certain privacy aspects. Now here we see TorGuard and iVPN doing the best here with Molvad falling behind and then WeVPN. Molvad is really just missing out on two-factor authentication due to their kind of weird account system creation. It's very fluid and intuitive, only needing a code, but that means there is a downside. If someone does get your code, they can log into your account. There's no two-factor authentication methods to protect it. It's just kind of a downside of the system they have. For some people, they don't care, but this is definitely a downside of that system they have. iVPN pretty much gets everything perfect here, not having any website or mobile trackers, no history of leaks, two-factor authentication support on their website, open source analytics, and no company acquisitions in the past to jeopardize user trust in their company. TorGuard is pretty much the, exactly the same thing, so that's really good to see. WeVPN, being a newer company, hasn't finalized some of these privacy backend things. Um, I talked to the team about it, and they're kind of trying to get off the ground floor. Some of these older companies have been able to secure a larger user base, and they don't need stuff like more advanced analytic platforms, whereas WeVPN is still kind of struggling with some of that startup stuff, and eventually do kind of want to get rid of stuff like um, Google Analytics on their website. So that's definitely something you need to think about. They also have a couple trackers like Google Crash Analytics and stuff like that on their mobile applications. Nothing nefarious, just using anonymized kind of crash analytic data. So it's nothing concerning, but it definitely is not as completely private in terms of this little audit here than some of the other options here. 
Definitely Torgard and IVPN win this one. Going into a final roundup, here is the results of our little comparison. We see a wide display of VPN doing different things. Torvar pretty much is perfect in my um, estimation. Um, that's why I'm always recommending it to people. It doesn't really have too many weak spots. Really the only weak spot is you have to pay a little bit extra for streaming compatibility, but it is an option and a lot of people don't care. And since you can get it as the cheapest VPN without streaming, it's definitely a good choice for a lot of people. Wii VPN is a little bit lackluster in some of having the stuff like Google Crash Analytics and Google Analytics on their website to kind of encourage new user growth and figure out where users are coming from. It's definitely a little bit of a downside, but everything else they do really, really well. Molvad is pretty affordable one month to one month, but long term they do get more expensive since the price isn't changing. Um, that said, they also don't have the best streaming compatibility um, or compatibility overall with stuff like no extensions and limited simultaneous connections. Um, they also don't have two-factor authentication, which is a bit of a bummer, but overall do pretty well in privacy. Finally, we have IVPN doing very well in privacy, but missing out on every other category here in this comparison, being more expensive than the other options, having slower ticket response times, no streaming compatibility, and lackluster compatibility across the board overall. Anyways, guys, this was my comparison of my top two VPNs versus the Reddit VPNs. As you can see here, TorGuard and WeVPN overall do better than the other options here, and I hope that makes you understand why. Anyways, guys, thanks for checking out this video, and I'll see you again very soon.